I'm a final year uh, registrar, um, originally from uh, Aberdeen, but uh, I work in Cardiff uh, in Wales, and I'm dual accrediting in general internal medicine and clinical pharmacology. My name is Emma Morrison. I'm a trainee in clinical pharmacology at the University of Edinburgh and in um, NHS Lothian. Um, I'm halfway through my training, um, but I've taken three years out of programme to do a PhD, um, and I'm dual accrediting in general medicine and clinical pharmacology with a subspecialty interest in toxicology. Uh, my name's Dagan, I'm from North London and I now work in South London <laughs> at St George's Hospital um, where I'm uh, uh, in my last two years of training as a registrar in clinical pharmacology um, and intensive care medicine. For myself, I was looking for uh, a specialty that had um, clinical uh, input, so there's a, a general medicine uh, aspect to it. Um, I'd still be involved in clinical duties looking after patients, um, which I enjoy. But also I wanted to do something where I had the opportunity to get involved in teaching, both at kind of undergraduate, postgraduate level, lots of opportunities for that in clinical pharmacology, and also possibility for, for research and getting involved in that as well. And it's a very kind of wide specialty, there's lots of different areas, toxicology, and cardiovascular pharmacology and things, so, so that's why I went for it. I had, similar story, I, I had a bit of a, a sort of a, a strange route into it and it was a bit of an 11 hour decision really. Um, I always knew that I wanted to be a clinical academic. I'm quite mathematically minded for a medic and it just so happened that I was on a general medical post-take ward round with a fair... <laughs> rather eminent um, clinical pharmacologist and I found out that was actually his training specialty and in, during the course of that ward round he managed to convince me to uh, apply for that training specialty one month later. So it was a really last minute decision and it's, it's quite strange looking back now. The number of people that I now know are clinical pharmacologists and study clinical pharmacology and have contributed a lot to the specialty. I don't think that I really knew that's what they did. I knew I wanted to do academic medicine. I was working in the acute services and I sort of fell into doing some research with a group of clinical pharmacologists and suddenly realised that this was the place where I should mm -hmm. be. It allows you to really sh shape what you do with your yeah. life in medicine. You know, it's, it's not the same as doing um, you know, an organ-based specialty mm -hmm. where you, you, you have your seven-year training programme mapped mm -hmm. out for you. Mm -hmm. So every month or every six month period a new door opens so I start off doing a bit of research and a bit of education not really knowing where my direction is then decide I want to do intensive care medicine and combine that kind of clinical training and suddenly someone opened a door for me to do some research into antibiotics I discovered the world systems pharmacology of pharmacokinetic modeling and suddenly all these skills I'd done at A level maths and and stuff that I'd done um, in my undergraduate uh, career when I'd done a, an, an integrated BSc in physics suddenly became really useful and it just everything started to fit together mm -hmm. and the further I've got on through my career the things like the opportunity to involve myself in policy has started to open up and I'm involved obviously in the drugs and therapeutics committee at the hospital which I'd never even heard of when I was a, a mm -hmm. junior doctor but suddenly involved in those decisions mm -hmm. about what drugs we use for our patients in the hospital why we choose them and, and what things we need to be careful of and therefore the possibilities as you said are just uh, are limitless because as I said that's the whole of medicine is essentially pharmacology and you have this ability, I think, also, as you were saying, to, 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 to influence, make quite profound uh, influences, whether on a local level with the Drug and Therapeutics Committee and even up into national or international level, uh, in proving care and things like that. And I think in that aspect, um, clinical pharmacology, it kind of supersedes like organ-based specialties. You know, it, it's not restricted, so we can kind of go above that almost. And I think that's a, that's a, a great interest. Um, I was always really affected by, so it, it, if you're dealing with a patient, that's, a, that's an N of one, but you can make deci decisions and influence policy and uh, prescribing practices at a much higher level. Um, so I went into clinical pharmacology from that point of view. The thing that I, I like the most about it is that at no point are you asked to choose um, and you have that opportunity to um, really sort of engage in, in pursue your own interests but know that in doing so that you're not falling down a rabbit hole of which there is no comeback mm -hmm. that you're you, you have that opportunity to try something else new out but you're not having to say goodbye to anything else and when it comes to traditional organ-based specialties you find yourself doing something very similar for decades and in clinical pharmacology that's absolutely not the case.